Well everybody, welcome back to part two of the 49 inch assembly. In this segment, we're going to assemble the housing. Um, we're going to finish the carrier. Well, almost finish the carrier. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, you'll also see where I had to grind on the center section assembly to make some clearance for our Detroit locker that's in here as well as the new ARP ring gear bolts. And you'll also get a chance to see assembling the brakes and the hardware for the uh, uh, full float bearing assembly. The Grand National Hubs are called. So, hope you enjoy. Alright, so I just went ahead and got the studs installed in the housing. <clears throat> um, I just used a spacer I had and a washer or whatever. Um, I had a thin film of grease on them when I first started, that way everything spun nice and easily. And I just used them in nuts to draw them down. Um, this Speedway kit did not include hardware. Well, I, I, sorry, it included the studs, but it didn't include any of the nuts for the studs. So I went and got some ARP, uh, these are 3 8 on 24, so the fine thread 3 8 So went and got some nice ARP nuts for that. And uh, now if that's complete, let's, uh, let's keep going. All right, so now we are going ahead and installing new studs. So the studs that came with this kit were uh, 5 8 So they were 5 8 fine thread on the uh, hub side, and then 5 8 coarse thread for the lug nut. Um, they would work good with the race car wheels that everyone uses when they, when they do this, but uh, we didn't really want to get into drilling out the American racing wheels that are on the truck currently. So Speedway Motors offers this kit that goes from the 5 8 stud for the Grand National Hub to half inch on 20, half inch fine thread. So um, this seemed like a lot better option than drilling the wheels out, especially for the $68 or whatever that was it cost. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little thread locker on them and run them in. Alright, so now I'm going to actually get the uh, studs torqued down, so I'm going to slide them on here just so i got an easier way to hold them in place. Um, that's how I removed the existing studs that came with it, and the existing studs weren't crazy tight, and there's no torque spec or whatever that I can find for these. So I'm going to torque them to like 40, and uh, we'll see how that feels. I guess by holding the stud that I was actually torquing when I was doing these two, probably was uh, kind of skewing my readings a little bit here, so. the other side okay so now we're back over here to the pinion um, the next step with this is we're going to have to press the outer bearing down and uh, it's not really 
crazy easy easy way to do it without having some sort of a pipe or a sleeve or whatever to drop on here so what i did find was this piece of two by two steel that sits right on the inner race nicely and uh we're gonna go put this over in the press and squish her together now what we don't want to do is we do not want to tighten it so much that we start to crush our crush sleeve um for that, I'm going to need a quarter inch beam type torque wrench to measure our pinion preload as we're spinning around. And uh, that'll be here tomorrow. So um, for the time being, I'm going to just snug this together um, and run the pinion yoke on with, uh, with the impact, start to crush the sleeve a little bit, get just a touch of drag on the bearings and then leave it until I get my, uh, my uh, torque wrench. And then what we'll do is we'll continue to work on the um, carrier housing um, and try to get this one step closer to being finished. Okay, so now we've taken the slack out of the bearing. Uh, so the crush sleeve has started to tighten. So I'm gonna leave it just like this, like I said, until I get my, um, my quarter inch torque wrench in the mail. And then uh, we'll come back to this. Okay, so now I've got the uh, carrier gently clamped in the vise here. Um, the Detroit locker is so thick Compared to like the existing spool we had, I wasn't able to reuse the ring gear bolts. Um, it also with the the reliefs cut in here, the bolt heads were were awfully big, and it was going to be very difficult to get a socket on it. So I went ahead and I got these ARP 2000 bolts. They're seven sixteenths by twenty, and I believe these ones were inch and a quarter long. And uh, I'm not using the washers that were included with it. We're just going to torque them down like normal, um, 65 foot-pounds, just as the spec says. So now our ring gear is good to go. Okay, so now I've got our third member assembly back in the vise here. Um, I remember nothing's cr clamped down very tight, which is using it as a way to hold things. Um, I don't remember if I had already showed or not. I went ahead and already installed the new pinion support bearing in here. So I'm going to take the, our new races and install them on our carrier and set this in place. And our threaded adjusters on here. Okay. So now I'm going to put our main caps back on. Oh, fun. Well, so here's the issue we're running into right now. 
Oh God. So currently the bolt heads are hitting here on the inside of the case. But the carrier is also hitting here. So it clearly has to get shimmed this way or adjusted over this way. But uh, not with the bolt heads hitting. Hmm. rock stuff back and forth like that for a minute and then uh, take this back apart and see if we can see where everything was hitting maybe right there on the inside okay so with the low light it's pretty difficult to see but it appears that the ring gear bolts are not going to be our issue what I did here is I went ahead and slapped our pinion support in, even though I know the preload's not correct yet. And it's definitely hitting here. So I think what I'm gonna do is take everything back apart and get the flap wheel out and start trying to clearance the case there a little bit. Um, I got a little bit of a concern that it might sacrifice some strength, but the pinion support bearing or the i don't know i've always called it a pinion support bearing i'm sure it's got some other name but anyways what it's trying to do is keep the pinion from deflecting this way right the pressure on the gear is actually going to try to kick bend the the pinion gear as uh as you apply torque to the gear right because it's trying to ride up the teeth all the time so it move to the side so really all the strength is in this side of the bearing not really so much there. So I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm gonna probably take like an eighth of an inch or so off there um, because right now the carrier won't move and we have way more than we should for backlash. So like I said, I think we're gonna be fine on this side of the case, which honestly is a bigger concern of mine. So I'm gonna start uh, trying to sand a little bit of that away. Okay, so we've got everything reassembled here, and we've got plenty of clearance now. Now the issue is right there. So it does appear that our bolt heads are touching somewhere down in the case, but it's not a lot. I can actually, if you force it by. So we should have a good rub mark here now somewhere. And uh, let me know where down in the carrier itself or third member housing itself that I'm going to actually have to grind now. So let's take it apart for the third time. Okay, so you can see our line where uh, our ring gear bolts are touching the case. And there actually is a really big casting ridge right here too. So I'm going to, uh, you know, just start at this area with the flap wheel as well. Um, I mean, you can see the thickness of the threads here for the fill port. Tons of uh, material in here, you know, and again, we're not taking a lot off, but uh, we were pretty much at zero backlash during that last test fit. Um, so the, the, you know, the carrier is gonna, or ring gear and stuff is gonna have to come this way further. So, you know, we're going to go a little ways past here, but I mean, really, we're only going to take off probably realistically 50 or 60 thousandths of an inch. So let's get to it. Feel the ridge here what we took off so let's see if that's enough okay so here's where we're at 
Um, after grinding that case, I reassembled everything and I figured now that we're kind of trying to dial it in and get it close, this is not final anything because the pinion preload is not torqued yet. Um, but I threw my dial indicator on it quick and we're right about where we need to be as far as about 10 thousandths or so for backlash. And everything spins perfect now. So now we don't have any issues, anything contacting anything. And that's with, like I said, about 10 thousandths backlash. Now the caps aren't torqued, nothing's torqued, but um, at least gets us pretty close to where we need to be. So um, now that I know that that's good, I'm going to drop the entire assembly into the housing. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to get the bearing assembly set up. I want to make sure our shafts are the correct length and um, I can at least uh, get ready to throw it under the truck. So there is that. Now let me actually go grab my uh, ARP washers that I was given with the ring gear bolts. Actually, you know what? I guess there's really no reason to put all these in. Probably just two, I think, would be plenty to hold everything together and, uh, you know, get, uh, well, you know what? Put four, just for good measure. Four out of ten sounds good. Um, so, yeah, so all we're doing here is I'm just going to assemble this just enough that I can get, uh, get the bearing assemblies done on the end and the shaft slid in to make sure that all their shafts are going to be the right length and then uh, really I'm going to have to take it all back apart because we're not totally done here but uh, never hurts to mock some stuff up. Alright so as we go ahead and assemble this um, we've already changed our studs here we also already have the bearing and the seal as well as the spiral lock that retains the seal installed in the back of the hub here. So, what we need to do to finish the installation, we've got the other bearing, the locking ring, as well as the spindle nut on the end. All right, so our first step here, before we get crazy with this, is uh, we're gonna put a little grease on our seal so that uh, we don't risk tearing our brand new seal on the axle housing. We're going to slide this guy up over the housing here. Right there is the seal fighting us as it goes up in place. So, next step is we're going to take our bearing and install that. Fortunately enough, the races were already installed on these, so we didn't have to worry about tapping those in. And then we got to put our locking washer in. Uh, this is going to go in with the inner tang facing the pumpkin. The outers, you know, so they can be folded over to lock the, the uh, retaining nut in. So there's that. And then the retaining nut itself has a chamfer on the one edge. You're going to put the chamfer towards the uh, locking tab. That way then when you fold the ears of the tab over, it uh, you know doesn't fold right around this sharp edge here. You know what I mean? It can actually kind of wrap a little better. And then... You'll, uh, once everything's torqued for good, I'm not going to fold the tabs over right now, um, but once everything's tightened for good, um, you'll just want to make sure that when your tabs lines up in the uh, slots here, the spanner slots on your locking nut. So we're going to get this big guy started. Which is always a good time. There we 
go. Sometimes if you spin it the opposite way, it uh, helps it seat and fall into place better. Okay, so now that that is down, we're going to turn our bearing assembly as we're tightening, or our hub as we're tightening it. And there's really no reason to go much tighter than that right now. So now that that is done, we have our drive flange that goes on. This is gonna sit on the raised portion of the studs here. And that's what the axle is actually going to go into to drive everything. We've got a couple countersunk screws here to retain it. I'm going to install these. Okay. So now we'll actually be able to slide our axle in and uh, get uh, get our cap assembly on the end. Now, if I remember right, this one should take the longer of the two axles. Our smaller splines are going to go into the diff. Okay, perfect. And then, well, what I I did leave out the O-ring that's here. There is an O-ring that goes between the drive flange and the hub to make sure that uh, any of the oil that gets slung down the tube to lube the bearings it doesn't end up escaping. I'm not going to worry about that right now, just temporarily. And then to top it all off, we have our sweet little pink Speedway Motors axle caps for the end. So I'm actually going to put a little grease on this to help retain the uh, our o-ring in place here. Our Vaseline that does a good job too working as a glue assembly glue especially if you're doing something like transmissions or whatever. Okay, so that's it. That's our complete uh, hub assembly on the end. And now uh, we'll get the other side done. All right, so now that we got all our hubs and axles assembled and everything, I figure I'll get a jump on the brakes. Um, now, the plan with this housing is, now that everything's assembled, um, I'm going to put it in the truck or at least get the truck here, get the old axle out of it, the leaf springs, and then figure out our four link mounts. But I figure in the meantime, I'll at least get the brakes on it. Um, now I know I wanna put the brakes on the back side of the axle um, where there's absolutely zero obstruction, as well as it's also gonna give us the best angle for our parking brake cables to come out and point towards the front. And that'll make sure that our bleed screw will be on top. Okay, so now we've got it up on the jack stands here. We have another stand under the pinion. And as you can see on the gauge, or on our magnetic uh, angle finder here, we're approximately two to three degrees of pinion angle. Now, one degree or so on our calipers here isn't gonna matter too much, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get them situated so that they are 
um, you know, pretty much perfectly uh, parallel or uh, vertical off the back here, and uh, we'll get these things tacked down. Okay, we look nice and perpendicular from the axle here, and uh, just going to go ahead and finish burning it on. Okay, so right after I just said that I was going to finish burning it on, I remembered that we have a rubber seal right here. So last thing we want to do is get the tube hot and damage our seal. And since the entire assembly is going to have to come back apart anyways, um, after we get all the brackets on it, uh, to rather paint it or have it powder coated, um, that'll be the time at that point where we uh, weld both sides of the bracket and uh, you know do our final finish, finish weld from there. So now, the easy part of putting the first one is done. On, it's done. The second part is replicating the same angle on this one. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a quick measurement from the floor to our lower bolt here. And uh, the jack stands are set at the same height and everything, so that should give us an idea that it's uh, positioned at the same spot on the axle. Alright, so we're going to go install the parking brake hardware now. We're probably jumping the gun a little bit here, but... I kind of want the mess cleaned up off the floor. So the more of it that is assembled, the better.
Okay, now that is tight. All right, put my spring on here first. for the spring down there. Okay. <clears throat> now it looks ridiculous right now, but uh, once we get some tension on it, better so there's one side in the meantime I'm going to just coil this up kind of how it was so it's not uh, intruding with everything here and we time to put the axle in the truck all right just like that I'll go do the other side well, everyone, there you go. In a nutshell, that's how you build a Grand National 9-inch. Now, obviously, it's not totally done. I still need to uh, take it, uh, take the center section back out, take the pinion housing back out, get the, um, you know, get the correct pinion preload on it, get the pinion seal in, reinstall our yoke, and then um, at that point, we will get our caps tightened up, Get our backlash adjusted accordingly. Do our um, our marking on the teeth, which I'll walk through in the next video, and you know to make sure that our pinion depth and our backlash and everything is is looking good. And then uh, at that point, we're going to uh, get this thing in the truck, or at least figure out what we need to get it in the truck. We're going to get the uh, old 10 bolt removed out of the S10, get the leaf springs removed, um, and what our plan is, we're going to do uh, link mounts coming straight off from the front leaf spring hangers, just because they're a tab that's already welded to the frame, easy to access, and it's a uh, pretty standard width, so we can get a bushing for that. So we're going to build our lower control arms off from there, and then... Um, we may just do a three link with one upper off the top of the case here, you know, with a bracket, whatever. And, uh, you know, whether add a cross member in the frame or, you know, I believe if I remember right, there's a cross member up near the gas tank, but it's been a hot minute since I've been under the truck. Um, and then at that, that point we can do a pan hard bar across or even a Watts link would be better, but I don't think we're gonna get that crazy with it, so. But in a nutshell, there you go, that's how you build a Speedway Motors a Grand National Ford 9-inch. Um, if you guys are liking some of the videos here in the garage, some of the shop stuff, let me know. Um, if not, I won't keep doing them. I, it's kind of a pain in the butt to film all this stuff anyways. I'm so used to working, for, working on stuff for years in here without it, without filming, that uh, you know, all of a sudden you start filming stuff and it's... Uh, you forget that you got to go start your camera and move different angles and whatever. But, uh, you know, if you guys are liking the stuff, let me know. I'll keep them coming. Keep documenting some of these projects we're doing in here. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to hit that like button. And, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Especially if you want to see some of the remaining progress we make. And uh, hope you guys enjoy your day.